How you going guys, it's Troy here. Um, I had a request to show how I do these uh, mosaic pins that you can use in your knife handles or in any handles really. Um, yeah, so I had a request to show it and uh, I was ma actually making some up for ER720 for a project that he's got going and um, I thought I might be a good opportunity to put a bit of a vid together and um, show you guys how it's done. I just want to acknowledge that I learned how to do this from um, Crash Blade Knives, who has a really good instructional video on uh, on here as well. So I'll put a link to that um, in the bottom of this video, and because uh, yeah, he shows it really, really well. And if I can uh, show you half as uh, half as good as he did, then um, yeah, it'll probably be a pretty good video. I'm I'm going to do things a little bit different to how uh, Crash does his. Um, I'm going to use slightly different products than I've ever used before. So that could be interesting, and um, uh, the way I sort of um, support my brass tubing is a little bit different to how he does his. So it might be a little bit of, um, yeah, uh, might be some new ideas here. Um, the products that we're going to use is this uh, three uh, three sixteenths brass tube. So essentially, what we're going to do is fill this with uh, metal and epoxy, or any product and epoxy really, um, to create pattern or a design and uh, hopefully by the end of the process we can come out with something that's uh, that's going to be usable in ER's uh, little upcoming project. So yeah this is the 3 sixteenths brass tubing, it's uh, relatively cheap and normally you'd fill it with products like this, um, yeah, there are more brass tubing of various shapes or you've got some stainless steels and nickel silvers in, uh, bra in rod, rod form and uh, again more more brass rod this stuff's quite uh, all these things are quite rigid this uh, brass rod here that you've got I've got in my hand is uh, less than a millimeter and as you can see it's, it's quite stiff still and very uh, very easy to work with uh, in straight amounts to push them into uh, into here to create a shape um, what I'm going to do different today that I've uh, never never tried before uh, I'm not sure whether anyone's ever given this a shot um, ER720's uh, enjoying copper at the moment, um, so I wanted to use some copper tubing, or some, sorry, some copper, uh, some copper rod. Um, this is a recycled material, it's got 0.90 copper in the middle. Um, I can't really see from this angle if my camera is focusing very well guys, I apologise if things are out of focus. Um, yeah, this is uh, 0.90 copper, and then it's uh, coated with a poly uh, product on the outside, and uh, we're going to go with an orange and black theme. This uh, is very, very soft, and I'm not sure how we're going to go with push, trying to push it down into the um, into our brass tube. So, yep, this could be a complete uh, a complete fail on a few different levels, but um, I don't know. I'm, I'm fairly confident that it's going to work all right. So yeah, different product. Um, first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to sand this a little bit. I um, when I was playing around with this last night, just seeing how it, how it fits into the uh, three sixteenths, it was a little bit tight, and um, it grabbed a little bit on the way down. And I don't want to have anything like that happen when I've got the um, epoxy red epoxy resin ready to go because uh, yeah, things can get messy quickly when when you've got liquid products uh, around. So I'm going to sand these down a little bit just to remove a little bit of mass but also um, it's a good thing to sand uh, whatever materials you're putting into the middle of this stuff uh, for a couple of reasons. It, um, sanding it creates a texture on it so the epoxy resin uh, binds to it better and also sanding it cleans it essentially. And with a product like this that's so flexible, flexible, this process that I'm doing now is also straightening it out a little bit, which is going to make it easier to get it down into my brass tube. So I'm going to do this for a little while. Um, before, before we go on, um, though, uh, we're going to, um, these are the other, some of the other materials. Um, this is the uh, black pigment that we're going to dye our um, epoxy resins with later on. So I'll move these out of the way now. And uh, I'll continue on with sanding. And when I've got um, things sanded and ready to go, um, then we'll have a look at the next step. Uh, another thing um, too uh, is also sand this little edge here. 
just like that. Just that'll just help anything uh, not to bind on the way down. Just give ourselves a nice uh, smooth surface on the inside of this to uh, so that things push down nice and easy. So anyway, I'll keep going on with these guys, and we'll um, have a look, do the next step when I get back. See ya. Hey guys, so um, just finished uh, doing the sanding on these. Uh, just to tidy them up and remove a little bit of the mass and uh, we'll just have a look, see how they fit in. And yeah, they're going in quite smoothly. Um, not being a perfectly straight item like the other brass tubes, there's a little bit of friction there, but yep, that wasn't too hard. So I think once we get our epoxy resin in here. Um, I'm going to fill this with epoxy very shortly and then we'll slide these down in. Um, the epoxy should add a little bit of lubrication as well so um, we should be alright. So this is where um, things vary a little bit, um, where I do it a little bit different to crash. What I'm going to do now um, is uh, support this up like this before filling it with epoxy and the way I do it, uh, just on an old piece of timber. I take a, um, a hot glue gun and I make a mountain of um, a mountain of hot glue. Well, I hate it when it does that. And then I just um, stand this up in it like that. And you just got to be patient and hold it there until your glue sets. And what that does is it seals the bottom of that so that your epoxy doesn't run out. And it um, will hold this tube nice and upright. And as long as you're reasonably gentle with your process, you shouldn't it shouldn't give you too many dramas. I might even, um, once this is set, I might even put a little bit of extra hot glue around there because I'd normally do more, but I ran out, um, my glue gun just ran out of glue. So I'll, um, once this is set, I might put some extra around the bottom just so I get a nice, uh, get a nice hold there. So yeah, as you can see, this is uh, fairly stationary here now. Add a little bit more glue to the bottom of this from the hot glue gun just to hold it in place. Now, there's a million, uh, probably a heap of different ways that you can do it um, to uh, to get this upright like this. You could even use um, a product like some sort of product like this maybe like a Celastic product and put a big uh, dob of it there and jam it in there. But anyway, this is just, just the way I like to do it. So next up we'll mix the um, mix the epoxy. I like to um, mix in a uh, well, I, yeah, I like to mix in the container that I'm measuring in. Sometimes I'll do it straight out of a big syringe, like this. I've done it out of one of these before. Or um, today what I'm going to do is actually just do it in a uh, measuring cup. And then I might suck it out with a small syringe and apply it in there. Um, what I have encountered uh, is if uh, you're mixing in a syringe like this, um, it can be hard to get uh, an even um, to get it evenly mixed, and uh, yeah, that caused me some problems on um, one time because you've got such a it's not a very open container; it's hard to stir it. going to add a little bit of colour now guys. I'll put the lid back on uh, real quick because uh, it does go off a little bit too. Right. Now, you want to give this a really, really, really good mix.
All right, I'm going to transfer this across to a syringe now to get it into uh, into there. I've, I've had a fair bit of success with these uh, with this syringe method. The day that I don't have gloves on, that's right. And now this is a, a little bit tricky too here, because you've got to, because we've essentially created a vacuum. So you want to try and get these to drop in there without sealing the top. And it is a uh, can be a long process. This little um, bit of wire is gonna help uh, that top not seal up while I pour this in. Yep, that's looking pretty full now. Right, I think we'll uh, put our little bits of copper down and all things being equal, we should get these down without too much problem. Oh look at that. Now you want to um, push these really nice and slow. You want that, all that epoxy to get in right in amongst all of this. So nice and slow, let the epoxy get all around uh, in between the materials. Even just if you want to let it sit for a little minute. And all that epoxy coming out the top's a good sign that we've got enough in there. Yes, yeah, so there's probably not too much to add at this point in time. Um, I'm just going to watch this for a little while, and if, if I see that settling down a little bit, I'll uh, just uh, add a little bit more epoxy from up here and uh, let that just flow down in between the materials there, and, and hopefully it'll keep on travelling down, and we'll end up with a nice consistent. Um, fill of the black around the around the orange and now it's really just a matter of um, waiting for this to set we'll have a look at it tomorrow and see uh, how good this um, this poly material is as a fill for uh, uh, for mosaic pins hey guys uh, back of uh, let this set for a good 48 hours now um, so we'll free it from the um, from the glue here and uh, start cutting into it and having a look what it looks like. Cut these little guys off. Right, um, I'll just uh, I think I'll just pause the camera here and then um, I'm just going to cut cut the end off with a hacksaw and then just polish it up and see what we've ended up with and see if it, if it worked. Hey guys, I'm back. Um, so 
I didn't really explain before um, when I when I popped this out of uh, out of the um, the glue there, but I cut the uh, I cut a little bit off each end, and the reason I do that is on one end where the top is. Um, you probably can't see this, but uh, especially if it's out of focus. But uh, it always uh, the glue always shrinks, so there's like about mm, a millimetre there. Um, which, uh, can't really convert at the minute, but uh, yeah, about a millimetre there. It, it's actually shrunken down. So the very end, the very top where the glue goes down, is is always no good. I've discovered. So you cut a little bit off there. And the bottom, because of course, like the um, the bottom was actually sitting in the glue, so the bottom's no good too. Um, so I cut that off. But what we've ended up with, um, I can't quite tell whether this is uh, going to work yet, because uh, I need to polish it. But you can see our um, our little bits of copper going down there. I can just make out the orange. So maybe once I polish this, it'll whoop, get that back in frame. Um, Maybe once I polish this, it'll come up all right. We can just make out the orange there. Anyway, I'll uh, hit this up on some sandpaper now. And we'll come back and we'll see if we've had a success story or not. Hey guys, uh, back again and we're finished. We've got one finished uh, mosaic brass tube. Um, this is going over to uh, ER720 for a project that he's got going. Um, and what do you got, mate? You got five and a half inches worth of tube there so you'll easily get three nice long pins out of that if you decide to go with uh, three pins but uh, let's have a look see what we've ended up with on the India um, I hope uh, yeah if you guys are, are still with us um, it's been a really long vid and I apologize for that but um, I think it's probably an interesting subject and certainly what we've uh, come up with here and ended up with was uh, well for me it was worth the wait <laughs> it was worth the time doing it um, I hope it was worth the wait for you guys to watch the video to see what we ended up with hey so yeah we got 0 0.90 millimeter copper surrounded by a poly uh, a poly insulation and then set in uh, black epoxy and in a um, 3 16th brass tube I've cleaned the tube up for you, mate. I got rid of all the excess glue and whatnot. Then you might want to just throw an eye over it, but I'm sure you'll, uh, sure you will. And um, yeah, she's good to go, mate. So you know what this means. We need to see see this knife project. I'm sure you're going to get around to doing it, man. That's been polished with a thousand grit. Um, when you um, put it in your knife, you'll probably even, you might even take it to a finer um, grit than that, and it'll look even blacker and even more orange as the uh, as it gets more smooth. Yeah, I'm pretty happy. I'm happy that it came out good because um, it's for a mate. And um, just to, this is what we started off with. This is what's inside there. Just some recycled materials. All right, guys, take it easy. Uh, again, I apologise for the long vid, but um, it's pretty hard to uh, to do something like this um, quickly. And um, maybe you guys got uh, got some ideas out of it. You know, maybe you just enjoyed seeing a um, a little custom knife uh, what would you call this a little bit of custom knife materials getting created peace guys see ya